really do like the phylum Echinodermata. They're so amazing, and I just I think I really like their symmetry. Of course, they're all radial symmetry, but it's that pentaradial symmetry that I really think makes them so beautiful and unique. Okay, we're looking at class Echinoidea, and these are the sea urchins. Sea urchins, you could go out into the ocean right now and you could find these purple urchins. They would look a lot better than this, but this dried specimen is at least showing all the spines that it's covered with. You have to be very careful in handling these. Uh, I have to wear neoprene gloves before because they really do poke and they get into you and it, it hurts and there are some that get very sharp. We also have larger uh, red sea urchins off our coast, usually a little bit deeper water. These guys you can get in tide pools. Okay, so when we look at the test, and this would be a particularly large purple urchin or perhaps even a red urchin, uh, anyway, that doesn't matter so much because the test is what we're going to be asked on the test. Oh, get it, test. All right, so we can have spines, but if we're looking at the test, we say, okay, what's going on here? It gets very tricky to tell on here, and we really have to zoom in when trying to figure out the madreporite, which is this portion right here is the madreporite, then the genital plates, and I can easily see with my naked eye, I can see one, two, three, but there's the other one, four. So each one of them has a little opening, a little pore. So those are the genital plates, that's the madreporite. In a living animal, there wouldn't be this big gap of a hole. There would be smaller plates here, and that is the location of where the anus is going to be. Okay, so the, this, is, this whole hole isn't the anus. It's really, it's broken off. Okay, but it would be in this location. This is pretty intact. Uh, if I compare my other uh, sea urchin test from a non-native species here, right? It's harder to see the madreporite, but I can right here. That's the madreporite. And then that means I have the genital plates here. I have a little less breaking out, but the anus was probably in here. But again, that hole is too large. The anus is, would be very small, but you get at least the general idea. I like this specimen. I have no idea where it's from uh, because it shows the pentaradial symmetry. If we imagined a five-armed starfish folding itself backwards, and if we could pretend like this is each arm, here, 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 and here. Okay, can you see that? Those are actually going to help us see the ambulacral plate. The ambulacral plate is going to have on each side of it, and I'm probably gonna have to zoom it in even more and then focus. Ooh, not the perfect, I can barely see it. I see it actually a little better with my naked eye. That all along here, I see little tiny holes. And again, on this side. Those are where the tube feet would poke out. Yes, sea urchins still have tube feet, okay? And then that this stripe in between where the tube feet are, this stripe here is called the ambulacral plate, okay? Now, let me show it to you. I'm going to leave the same focus. Hold a minute. Let's look at this urchin, and maybe we can see it better. I can see right here, that's where the tube feet would come out. See those little holes? Tube feet would be there. And then I can see it on this side, too. This is where the tube feet would be. Tube feet, tube feet the part in the middle, ambulacral plate. Oh, now let's zoom it out a little bit now. This is the aboral side of the test. If I turn it over, ah, there's a big hole, right? So I can see again, uh, a little bit cleaner my naked eye than perhaps a camera, I can see where the tube feet would be. So I can really see those arms. It's very arm-like, like the starfish is flipped over. And this large opening here is where this would be located. This structure, and it literally is located, it sinks in just a little bit. I don't want to drop it. So if you take a living urchin and you flip him over, 
They won't like that. They don't want you to do that. Uh, but nonetheless, you can make them do it if you're wearing gloves. And you can pull them over and you can see where their mouth is. Okay, so this structure here is called Aristotle's Lantern. And it really is fascinating. This structure here is still pentaradial symmetry. One, two, three, four, five different sides. And it's very intricate in the way that it moves. We can definitely see it's got these little teeth. Okay. And so this whole structure is called the Aristotle's Lantern. Different species are different sizes, and so the size of the Aristotle's Lantern really varies. But the overall shape and structure of it is the same. The function is the same, to rip apart whatever it's eating and get it into its stomach, right? All right, that is very nice. And it is low, so this is going to be the opening into all those teeth is the mouth. So the mouth is, again, on this side of the animal as it's running around and eating the vegetation or whatever it can find that it wants to eat. Okay? Class Echinoidea. Echinoidea. Same thing. Got to be able to spell it.